Let's turn today to Luke's Gospel, chapter 21 and verse 5. And while were some were talking about the temple, that it was adorned with beautiful stones and votive gifts, he said, As for these things which you are looking at, the days will come in which there will not be left one stone upon another, which will not be torn down. And they questioned him, saying, Teacher, when therefore will these things be, and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See to it that you be not misled. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and disturbances, do not be terrified. For these things must take place first, for the end does not follow immediately. The first thing that Jesus warned his disciples concerning the end of the age and the time of his second coming was this. He said, don't be misled. In other words, deception, spiritual deception, is going to be a predominant characteristic of the last days. And as we look at the history of Christianity in the 20th century, we find there's plenty of it, plenty of deception. Plenty of people who use the Bible to lead people into wrong paths. For he said, many will come in his name, saying that he is the Christ. We need to understand what verse 8 means. It's not that many will come in the last days saying that they themselves are the Christ. Because as we look around the world today, how many people in the world are there who say that I am Jesus Christ? There's nobody who goes around saying, I am the Christ. Maybe one or two madmen here and there. Apart from that, hardly anybody. And yet it says here, many will come. But that's not what he is saying. What he's saying here is that many will come in Jesus' name, saying that Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ. That's the meaning. Many will come in my name, saying I am he. And that the time is at hand. And that now the coming of the Lord is near. But don't believe them. When you hear of wars and disturbances, don't be terrified. Throughout history, there have been people who have said that the time is at hand, the time is at hand. As if they knew the exact day and hour, there have always been people who have even predicted the exact day when Christ would return. And he never returned. Well, we are not to be taken up with all these things. The Bible says that he who has the hope of Christ's second coming purifies himself as he is pure. We are not children of darkness. We are children of the light. And we will not be surprised when the thief comes because we are awake. That day will not overtake us as a thief if we are walking in the light and we are cleansing ourselves and judging ourselves. It will overtake only such people as a thief who are walking in darkness, who have got something to hide in their life, who have got sin in their life. But he told his disciples, when you hear of wars and disturbances, do not be terrified. Don't panic, for these things must come. But the end does not follow immediately. There's going to be a period of war. It says here in verse 10, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. That's going to happen. We cannot pray for worldwide peace because Jesus said it will not be there. But we can pray that as long as it is not yet God's time that he would restrain the forces of wickedness and violence so that we can spread the gospel and live a quiet and peaceable life like it says in 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 and 2 in all godliness and dignity. But we cannot expect that the world will see an era of perfect peace. No, when he said that towards the end nation will rise against nation, there will be wars and rumors of wars and disturbances. How can we pray against what Jesus said here in God's word? Kingdom will rise against kingdom. It will happen. There will be great earthquakes. It will happen. There will be plagues and famines in various places. We can pray for God's mercy, but we cannot avoid the fact 
that there will be earthquakes, there will be plagues, there will be famines, there will be terrors and signs from heaven too. Yeah, these things are all written in God's word. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and will persecute you. That also we cannot pray against. We cannot pray that there should be no persecution because Jesus said, all men will hate you on account of me. How can we pray against that? It's going to take place. It's happened in many countries. It will happen again in other countries. They will deliver you to synagogues and prisons and religious people will try you, bringing you before kings and governors for my name's sake. And when you are brought before these men, it will lead, verse 13, to an opportunity for your testimony. That is a thing that we must bear in mind. Not to avoid persecution and suffering. The only way to avoid persecution and suffering is to deny the Lord Jesus Christ. Decide not to follow him. But if we follow him, Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation. And he said, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me before it hated you. And if you belong to the world... He said the world would love you. That's the way to get the world to love us, to belong to the world. But he said, if you belong to me, Jesus said, then the world will hate you because it hated me before it hated you. And so, our aim on earth is not to get everybody to be happy with us and to treat us kindly. No, our calling on earth is to be a witness to Christ. And so, when we get an opportunity to testify, we must take that opportunity to testify and tell others what Jesus has done for us, the way of salvation through Christ. So he said, make up your minds not to prepare beforehand to defend yourselves. Make up your minds not to prepare beforehand to defend yourselves. For I will give you utterance and wisdom which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. So in that time, when we are called before kings and governors and rulers, we must be bold to give a testimony there. And this is why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In fact, we should take an opportunity to testify at every single opportunity we get, even now, whether we are persecuted or not. Wherever we get an opportunity to give our testimony, we must give it. For we are called to be witnesses to everyone we come across. And in that moment... There's a wonderful promise. You don't have to prepare beforehand how to defend yourself. No, there's no need for that. How to answer the charges against you. The Lord says he will give us the right words and such logic that your opponents will not be able to reply. Such wisdom that your opponents will be confounded. But you'll be delivered up, verse 16, even by those closest to you. Your parents, brothers, relatives and friends will betray you and have you arrested, and some of you will be killed, and every one will hate you because you are mine, and called by my name. What a word! You'll be hated by everyone because you are called by my name, and your own relatives and brothers will turn against you. Man's enemies will be from his own family. It's amazing how faith in Christ has made members of one's own family into enemies. But you can be sure of one thing, not a hair of your head will perish. What does that mean? Does that mean that people will not be allowed to torture us or trouble us? Well, that's, that wasn't even true in the Acts of the Apostles. They killed James. They, we know later on they killed Peter and Paul and all the apostles except John were killed. Then what does it mean when it says, not a hair of your head will perish? The meaning is that without my permission, they will not even be able to touch a hair on your head. What a promise. If we follow the Lord and we're going to be witnesses for him, we don't have to be afraid. No human being has the authority to touch even a hair on a child of God. There's a wonderful promise that we considered in an earlier study in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, where he says, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall injure you. It's a wonderful promise, Luke 10:19. Satan cannot touch us. 
No human being can touch a hair on my head without God's permission. If only you would believe that. It would deliver you from the fear of men. It would deliver you from the fear of witchcraft, demons, black magic, Satan, everything. If you'd believe that Jesus Christ has defeated Satan on the cross completely. And he's given us authority over all, all, Luke 10, 19, the power of the enemy. And what it says here in Luke 21, 18, not a hair of your head can perish. In another passage, we saw how Jesus said, the hairs on your head are numbered. God has counted the hairs on each of our heads if we are his children. And nobody is allowed to take one of them or to harm us. Why did he speak about hair on the head? It's the most insignificant part of us is the hair on our head. We don't even think about it when we lose a hair. One hair. Who thinks about that? It's not at all serious. And Jesus said, even that most insignificant thing of all matters to your heavenly Father. We must be rooted and grounded in this conviction. By your endurance you will gain your lives. Stand firm, Jesus said, in faith. Don't compromise. Don't hesitate to stand boldly to testify for my name before your unconverted relatives and friends and neighbors in your office. Don't be afraid. If we are afraid to be witnesses for Christ before our unconverted relatives and friends in the office today, where are we going to stand for the Lord in the day when we are persecuted by the opponents of Christ? Now is the op opportunity to seek God for the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can be bold. Remember that Peter was a person who was afraid even to testify to a servant girl. And a second time, he denied the Lord. But on the day of Pentecost, when he was baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire, what a different man he was. He stood before chief priests and scribes and told them, You have crucified the Prince of Glory. That is the boldness the Lord can give us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's seek him for that, that we might be his witnesses in our day and in our generation.